talk about DHEA, one of my favorite things, you know, the hormones and all that stuff. So what is it? DHEA? Well, yeah, DHEA, uh, Steve, is something that's really uh, new. I mean, it's not new, but it's something that's common in in the workout world. And that's why this is something that's very significant because as I mentioned to to patients, they're not really much familiar about it. And now I get the chance to, to introduce it to you guys. So the thing here is uh, DHA is a hormone in the body naturally produced in the adrenal glands and small amounts in the brain and the skin. And DHA also is produced to, uh, to help in pr producing testosterone and estrogen. So as you can see, if you get DHEA, you at least get three hormones or two hormones in one. And that's why uh, for one um, DHEA, you at least can get an estrogen or testosterone. That's why athletes are pretty keen about this. And they use the testosterone part in terms of boosting um, everything that they need for their workouts and their energy. And how does it work? Once DHEA gets in contact with the cell, it decides what it wants and what it needs. Maybe testosterone or estrogen. And natural DHEA levels peak in the early uh, adulthood and then fall slowly as you age. So peak at teens and at, by 70, you will at least have one fourth level of what you had when you started. And it's almost called the savings account because the source of testosterone and estrogen always comes from you comes from your ovary but now when you get into menopause then that's the only thing that you're going to be using so menopause ovary comes once a month that's why it's called like your paycheck but when it comes to the paycheck ending this is now going to be your source okay so it sounds like what you're saying is that dhe when it hits the cellular level uh, is going to decide if you need estrogen or testosterone so I don't know, uh, what, what are the benefits of DHEA? So DHEA, the benefits of it is, number one, it's for anti-aging. It's for anti-aging and it's, uh, usually you would hear this as an anti-aging supplement. And also <clears throat> it's common in anti-aging clinics and the marketing for it uh, is really more for yeah, uh, energy and strength. So. Again, as I mentioned to you, it lowers as we age, and it also is known to improve well-being, cognitive function, and body composition. So being anabolic, meaning it's almost like the steroids. We hear the word anabolic with steroids, right? It's almost like testosterone, which is also anabolic. And even small studies have suggested that it improves skin hydration and firmness, and it also decreases the aging spots in elderly adults. And another one would be depression. Depression a uh, majority of the ones who has depression has low DHEA and osteoporosis, less bone loss and less fractures when we have normal DHA uh, values. And another important one that I see here in the clinic, it would be the immune system. People who have rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, Sjogren's, and most of the time when you get their blood tests, I'm not saying all, but when you like look at their blood tests, majority of them has low DHEA. And that's why it's an immune system protector. And at the same time, you would this is a more common thing that you would hear with the females, vaginal atrophy or dryness in menopause. So it can be in the cream form and it can help you, not us, but the females down there. And here's one that I guess everybody would be, I guess, can relate to. It increases muscle strength for the reason that it's a pro-hormone. So when you talk about pro-hormone, it actually increases steroid hormones. And when, I, when, it, when it, I did mention to you about it creates testosterone and estrogen, right? So the athletes are more familiar with DHEA converting into more testosterone. So the gym rats and workout people and the ones who use the supplements are very familiar with this in order to boost testosterone. But here's my caveat though. Athletes should not be using DHEA supplements because DHEA is prohibited at all times. And even though it's a dietary supplement, uh, it's actually being uh, regulated by the World Anti-Doping Agency. And it's in the prohibited list of things to use during competition. So many bodybuilders, 
um, and the hormone boosting um, stores and supplements and energy supplements contains DHEA. So be careful about this. And sometimes athletes get in trouble with this thinking that it's a very safe supplement. And the thing here is almost all countries except the US, DHEA is a controlled anabolic steroid, meaning you can't use it without a doctor's prescription. In the US, DHEA is exempted from the Controlled Substance Act and it means that it's treated differently from other steroids. DHEA is allowed, again, as I repeat, in dietary supplements by the FDA. Maybe that's why we're called the land of the free. We can actually do this, but caution to the athletes who are in competition. Boy, man, it's like there's so many restrictions on athletes these days, professional mm -hmm. athletes, Olympic athletes. I mean, you got to make sure you don't breathe the wrong air. They'll get you. So, <laughs> Well, you would hear about athletes getting in trouble for this, thinking that uh, I'm sure you've heard of so many controversies out there that, oh, I was only taking a supplement. And uh, that's what it was. Uh, they found out that there was hidden DHA in it. Yeah, there, well, there's a lot of vitamin type supplements that athletes can't take. So yeah. um, what if someone is deficient in DHEA. Um, is there a way to know that? I mean, how do you know if, if someone might be deficient in uh, DHEA? So that's a good question, Steve. So <clears throat> as I mentioned a while ago, there's so many disease entities or conditions that are related to DHEA. And if you manifest the, the ones that I just mentioned a while ago, depression, osteoporosis, vaginal atrophy, so those can be a high consideration that you might have a low DHEA. Another one would be aging and stress can lower DHEA. And um, again, there's no, way stop in, there's no way to stop aging, but of course stress can be something that you can control. Another one would be the use of external steroids. So you would see this with bodybuilders, athletes, or even people who has uh, chronic conditions who takes oral steroids. DHEA will be affected as well. And when you look at the symptoms of low testosterone and low DHEA, they can overlap. That's why there's a big confusion here. Hey, am I, if I have low libido, is it because I have low T or do I have low DHEA? Because as I mentioned to you, uh, testosterone actually is coming from DHEA, being the mother hormone of where testosterone comes from. So that's where we come in. Now your medical provider actually now needs to determine that for you. And we, in the practice, we always check, number one, the most easiest way would be blood. And the more expensive ways, which is not covered by insurance, uh, which is sal uh, saliva and urine, which are more accurate uh, if you want to get assessed for DHEA levels. And again, with, uh, with blood being the cheapest, that will be the most common one that you will be assessing. And this is checked in the form of DHEA, S, uh, sulfated or so, uh, with sulfur. And with, um, when you need to check uh, for levels, you definitely need to make sure that this is something that is guided by your medical professional. And for the reason that also when people are taking what we call supplements, they are always going to be side effects. And again, not the safest supplement for the reason that yeah, you can see other countries are regulating it. Okay, so what if it's determined that someone has low DHEA? Can you treat it? What do you do? Yes, Steve, you definitely can. The thing here is there is where there are natural ways, there are synthetic ways in how to treat it. The natural way is to enhance the natural body's production of DHEA. As I mentioned to you a while ago, stress is a big part of that. So lowering down stress, yoga, meditation, getting yourself out of that stressful situation, adaptogens such as ashwagandha, rhodiola, and those are very natural and all can be uh, at reach whenever you need them. And, and when you talk about synthetic uh, or um, medication or supplement um, remediation or fixing, uh, DHEA can be made synthetically in the lab by modifying a substance called di di diosgenin. And the synthetic version is sold maybe in a tablet or a capsule or powder or cream 
or even a gel. And as, as part of the FDA approved uh, DHEA, uh, there is one called Prasterone. This is not for the gym rats, but this is actually a topical cream. And this is only used for vaginal dryness. So unless you have that, this is the only way insurance will cover for that. And again, the market, uh, the market brands or the commercial brands that we, we, can, we can buy through the internet, supplement stores, they are either too strong or too low of a dose. And that's why we need to get levels so that it can be an individualized type of treatment for every person. And that's why you need a blood test by your medical provider. The one that we prefer is compounded for the reason that, again, as I mentioned to you, it's hard to get a good mark with the commercial brands. It's either too high or too low, look at what they offer. And by compounding it, you get the personalized dose for you. And the thing here is diosgenin is also found in soy and wild yams. But here's the thing. There's a marketing, um, I guess, theme out there to say that uh, DHEA can be retrieved from natural sources of, or food. The conversion of diosgenin in these food sources that I mentioned a while ago, uh, it does not occur in the body. The conversion cannot happen. That's why consuming wild yams and also um, soy, which I am not a big fan of, as we all know, and the soy product out there is GMO filled, is unlikely to increase DHEA, unfortunately. Hmm. So I know, I know that I like, I have so I haven't taken DHEA in a long time, but I have some capsules. They come in like 25 milligrams, 50 milligrams, a hundred milligrams. It's just like, it's just a powder in a capsule. Right. Um, so in, in a medical situation, someone finds it slow. Is, is that something that you recommend or what do you give them? Well, for, for us, uh, for, for somebody who is really deficient, uh, we can definitely, it's, so most of the time, the market commercial doses are high, meaning for the deficient ones, of course, they can start with that. But again, even with the commercially made uh, av or available DHEA, the quality is always in question. That's the point. But if, if somebody is low, uh, the, the commercial brand is something that they can bank on. But if somebody is actually now, now you're actually using DHEA, right? So you're putting your levels up there. So you want to now find a good sweet spot to maintain your DHEA in the middle. Now that's going to be the hard part about these commercial brands because they have only a set type of dosing. Yeah, I've noticed that. So I know that you have your own sources uh, to get these supplements and so on. So um, are there side effects? Uh, what if you take too much? Can you take too much? I'm sure you can. What are the side effects if you do that? That's right. So that's the thing. And here's where I want to uh, tell you, Steve, that people kind of always has this misconception of supplements. Oh, they're pretty safe. Now I'm telling you, this is one that went th uh, like went through the cracks, that this should actually be regulated, but it's not regulated in the United States. So we have to always think DHEA is an androgen. It's almost like testosterone. So the side effects are almost related to the excess of male hormones. So excess male testosterone administration. Side effects may be uh, actually including a growth of facial hair, even loss. I mean, for, for the growth of facial hair or growth of any hair in the body, it's mostly seen on females. But for men, if you get more of this because it converts to testosterone, you might have uh, hair loss or even baldness, and you might also develop acne, deepening of the voice, and even affect sometimes blood pressure to increase. And male and female would manifest differently, but in, in common, as the symptoms that I just mentioned, would can also manifest both. Uh, DHEA is also converted to estrogen. So as I mentioned to you, that the, the, the cell decides which ones it needs to use. So if you have more, you can also produce more E or estrogen, thus leading to feminization or even man boobs. So you don't want to be training with a sports bra. Okay, well, great topic, doctor. Um, thank you. Information on DHEA. That's Dr. Nario, Biointegrative Health Center. Thanks for being with us. 
Well, as we all know, Steve, thank you again for the invite. The knowledge is basically your power, and thank you for letting me provide you with the edge in longevity and health maintenance, which I call the biological edge or the bio edge. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, doctor. We'll see you next week.